these songs need to be interwoven into the story and not be kind of script, 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 song, script, 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 song. I'm not a musicals person. I say I don't sing. And I'm like, thank God you've offered me non-singing. It's got nothing to do with me. That's all your problem. I'm just very happy to be here. I am Prince Eric's mother. It's a lovely, and when I say balance, it's a lovely balance. It's this sense of these, um, the babies being um, two outsiders of their origin story. Do you know what I mean? And then finding each other. That's how I understood and how Rob described it. Eric being mothered and grown by a woman who looks like me on an island. And you hear that story. And then you look at Ariel and her family and she being the outsider of that. And there's that sense of, I think as in life, we recognize each other when we know what each other's been through. Rob and I understood him as this very, uh, adventurous but quite restless spirit who felt quite trapped and restricted behind the four walls of the castle and was really about looking outwards rather than inwards. What was really special about it was that that not only applied to him but it, it really informed his relationship with Ariel. They're kindred spirits and they don't want to be looking inwards all the time and are about kind of you know adventure and wanting to discover the world and learn about the world and thus learn about themselves. The costumes, Colleen Atwood, oh my God. I know they're glorious. I don't know how much you're gonna see of them, but I think you're gonna see quite a bit of them. Why I love costume, I'm one of those actors, if I don't feel right in a costume, it's really uncomfortable to play a character. But when you've got someone working, creating like Colleen Atwood, and I also have a sense of, I wanna feel comfortable. So they felt this lovely conversation uh, was going on because basically I'm just going, whatever you wanna do, Colleen, whatever you wanna do, <laughs> this is just glorious. But the handwork that was done, the, the, and you won't see it on the big screen, but I know what went into it. And it's literally artists making those costumes. They're all artists, let alone from her big head, but the artisans who were sewing. There's also Peter Swords King with the hair and makeup. So you've got all these artists who are at the top of their game. You broke the rules. You went to the above world. A man was drowning. I had to save him. This obsession with humans has to stop. I just want to know more about them. Ariel! It was such a gift to be given this role. So I was like, thank you guys. These types of auditions come around for these big, big films. And it, it could be a, a big Disney film like this. It could be a Star Wars film or a, or a Marvel. And it feels incredibly exciting, but also you're realistic about the potential for you to actually have any kind of traction. Mary Poppins Returns was the first big movie I got to be part of. And then for them to come back on Little Mermaid going, we'd love you to play this. I was like, oh my God. Did the audition, it went okay. I went back to my trailer and a few minutes later, there was a knock on the door and I heard this tiny voice outside and I opened and it was Hallie. And she just said, good luck with everything and hope to see you again. I was just traumatized and terrorized by it because I thought, what does it all mean? Is that an indication? Did she did she knock on everyone's door? Or was that because she thought it was a particularly good audition? And I had no idea. And it turned out weeks later when we started getting to know each other properly that she hadn't done that to everyone. And that it was a sign, a secret sign. I'm gonna be 54 this year. I keep, people keep telling me not to say my age, but I'm kind of going, no, I just need to let people know that whatever you think is supposed to be the thing is not necessarily the thing. Don't stop your imagination and limitation. It's pretty much 10 years since I started and plenty of ups and downs and far more rejections than acceptances for sure. But that's just everyone's experience. And then, I get to fall in love with Jonah Hua King. He is such a lovely man. I did text him uh, when the trailer came out going, are you ready? Are you ready? You better be ready, because this is huge. It's huge. We go upstairs to the music room and uh, we start warming up with the, the brilliant um, kind of music sort of supervisor who, who, who looked after the whole thing called Mike Hyam, who's worked with Rob on, on many of his films. And it was me and Mike, and then there's this knock at the door 
And uh, it was Alan, he popped his head in and he said, do you mind if I join you? And I was thinking, please don't. Because obviously every part of me was like, it's Alan, I want to hang out with you. But also, I don't want you anywhere near this rehearsal. <laughs> And uh, he came in and sat down, and minutes later, Lynn was there. It was just my worst possible nightmare, singing your beautiful song, but a great, great honor. I'm not a musicals person. I say I don't sing. And I'm like, thank God you've offered me non-singing. It's got nothing to do with me. That's all your problem. I'm just very happy to be here. He's at his most restless. Uh, he's longing to meet Ariel because as we know, she saves him. He doesn't know who this girl was and it's kind of a catalyst to start this journey of, of breaking free from, from his previous life and go on this journey of adventure with, with, uh, with this new girl. Um, and I think we learn a lot about him through the song, a lot, a, a lot about how he's feeling and, and what he wants. There's one moment when we were filming a scene, Rob had the music playing and this was on the beach had the music playing for us because he was he was panning, it was a kind of long show, he was kind of catching the whole environment and peoples and mer peoples while the water's waving and crashing. We could just sit in the music, which I thought was beautiful. I've never done that, do you know what I mean? You can just go, yes, because also he was so aware of how that was going to be on film. That's his job and he's brilliant at it. And for me as an actor, I'm like, actually that's really lovely because you don't know what the time and the tempo is. He's trusting it because he knows the music. And when you know music, you have to be on it. There is a form that you have to get into. It was really lovely to hear that music and just sit into that space. You're a mermaid. That doesn't make us enemies. The three months of rehearsal were phenomenal because we never get that on a film. Rob sets up cardboard boxes for the layout of the room that you're in. It's so simple. A lot of it was working as you would on a play. And it was just so clear. So already there's this invitation from the makers going, we're gonna make this special. And we want you to be part of that. Kylie's just a very present and open performer. She's like incredibly watchful and charismatic, but just as a scene partner is very, very alive to anything you're doing. Um, comes fully prepared, but is very quick to react to anything that is happening around her. She's so perfect for the role. She has everything the role requires. She, she has the spirit, she has the charm, like the voice, she has, the charisma, all of it. I'm very excited for people to see her in it.